On today's episode of Identity, founder of Black Women in Science, Ndoni Mkunu, pops in for coffee. We take a short left to Sunny Park Mall in Pretoria to attend the Bukhabo Art Festival. What's Happening features the review of a cardio workout app and a faith-based movie. And we wrap up the show with a studio performance from CEO King. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Hello and welcome to the fifth season of Identity. I'm your host, Viewer Kuala, and it's a pleasure spending the next half an hour with you. Over the years, Identity has been the most watched multi faith magazine show, and it's a pleasure for us to bring you another inspirational season right here on SABC One Mzanzi for sure. Jenges Krello, Xenemi Zanga Mashuma Matatu Eko, Lekwezamba Pambi, Lekwezo Moya, Nina Jay, Nabelekan, Kusnata Samkel, Undonelet, Nanam Sanje, Gwinfengle, Tiekofu. Geosphere, global dimming, bioelement, and microorganism. These are some of the terms Ndoni Mkunu uses on a daily basis. I have to be honest, when I read Ndoni's profile, I was slightly intimidated. She holds a Bachelor of Environmental Science, and in 2013, she completed an honors degree in Environmental Sciences and continued to pursue her master's degree from the University of KwaZulu Natal. In 2014, Ndoni was selected as a semi finalist in the Miss Earth Prestige contest. In 2015, she noticed that there was a lack of young women in the field of science and founded her own non profit organization, Black Women in Science, which provides knowledge and awareness of the science for young rural women. Talk about determination. Ndoni, welcome to Identity. Thank you so much for having me. Ndoni, ukule ganjan, ukule Growing up was actually very supportive. I have two parents that basically um, formed and molded every single aspect of my life. So growing up, I grew up in KwaZulu-Natal and I grew up in the area called Durban North. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a school which was focused on Christianity. Um, The name of the school was Victory Christian Academy and then I moved into St. Barnabas. So my family is very founded and has a very strong foundation Mm -hmm. around Christianity, spirituality and having a whole complete perspective of life rather than just looking at it in a one-eye perspective. So. Yes. Okay, but when did spirituality actually start to mean something for you? Because I know that you grew up in a spiritual household. Mm. So it's different going to a Christian school and someone telling you this is Christ mm. and actually experiencing him. So I, I honor and I value the fact that I actually went through that um, foundation of knowing who Christ is. But then when Christ actually wants you to become closer to him, he kind of shows you him through your life experiences. So I actually only started really um, practicing Christianity and seeing Christ in my life probably when I entered varsity mm-hmm. and when I started to be alone and actually started to see that things don't work out as perfectly as you want them to be Mm. so it really is something that um, was founded in me and is in my heart and once the seed is planted in your heart you can't escape it so Mm. um, that's when I really started seeing it so varsity life um, after varsity challenges in life and things just don't make sense and you need you can't rely on your your own understanding Mm. and you've touched up on varsity Mm. I know that you've got three degrees in environmental sciences what led you to that field of study and what exactly is environmental science I wanted to study agriculture I didn't have enough points to actually study agriculture in varsity so then the other option was environmental science then I got into the field and um, I loved it I loved the fact that you're studying um, how you're living you're studying natural things you're studying water you're studying food you're studying energy Mm -hmm. you're studying all these things that sustain you for free that are God given and that's basically what environmental science is is actually managing human interaction as well as um, the science of it so Mm -hmm. what runs it what actually limits the sea to not bulldozing the whole of Mshanga Beach. Mm -hmm. So that for me was phenomenal. And that's where I actually saw God because that's where you actually see that these things 
are just happening without man understanding. Mm-hmm. So environmental science looks at different things and I think that's the challenge about it when and it's evolving and it's shaping up. So um, you can look into water, you can look in agriculture, you can look into food security, you can look into energy. And I want to t- touch up on the Nelson Mandela Washington mm-hmm. Fellowship. Mm-hmm. I mean you were nominated for it. Congratulations mm-hmm. for 2017. So what does that entail and what does it mean mm-hmm. specifically for mm-hmm. you? So first of all it's an honor to be actually um, selected for that program and the program really looks at leadership and looks at how can you as an African influence um, the, the African continent in changing um, whatever sector that you dominated in. So I got selected based on my organization Black Women in Science and also the fact that I'm doing my PhD and I'm passionate about community and change. Mm-hmm. So it, it looks at um, leadership training, mentorship training, how do you make your organization run? You know, not necessarily that you're making profit, but you're making cash flow enough to expand and also to change more lives in, in South Africa. Yeah. And you're very passionate about women empowerment and we yeah. see this through your organization. Yeah. Please tell us a bit about it and what really inspired you to start it. Mm. I think amongst our community, especially Africans, mm. is that you all of us need to go back and see what needs to be changed. Mm. Otherwise, it's not going to be changed. So I think that's where the organization stemmed from and my co-founder Dombi who's doing her PhD in France also has an amazing passion for community development and, and change so that's where it got developed so the organization looks at two legs it's two programs and the program the first program is looking at university students mm-hmm. so how do we make them relevant how do we make science more um, hot mm-hmm. and a more hip and happening, hip and happening you know yeah. so how do we make them more um, market relative mm-hmm. and also try and store to them that they themselves have the power to change another person's mm. life. So we have a mentorship program under that and they get um, they go to the community, they also get training on what is science, what is research, how do you become dynamic mm. and influential. It's like an, it's like an each one teach one yes, kind of system. Each one teach one, yeah. yes. Okay, and yeah. to close off the interview, I just want to mm. find out from you, what are words of encouragement would you give to a young woman or Selekai who's really inspired by your story, I mean, who's never thought of even going into science because we are so bombarded with the entertainment industry you know so what would you advise that young person to do moving forward I would advise them to first of all find a mentor and actually understand what it is to be a science and what science is is relative and is at the target of the government I know it's it's a, it's a lot of words for someone who's young but once you find someone that is older they can maybe direct you to to someone that to the careers that you need to be directed to mm-hmm. and most importantly um, analyze what you enjoy and what you want to and, and what you want to change most importantly in that sector and know that it's not always going to happen the way that you want it to happen mm-hmm. and um, know that every sector needs someone to actually think outside of that box mm-hmm. so that's the advice I'd actually give it so we're not all serious like identity we've got a fun word game called choose my kid for you today all right okay. so you need to answer as quickly as possibly okay uh, one over the other are you okay ready? Yes. all right hiking or bungee jumping hiking coffee or green tea green tea afro or weave afro kzn or johannesburg KZN. Oh, Johannesburg, <laughs> oh, let me finish. <laughs> Seafood or Mkhodu? Mkhodu. Okay. Kanye Lomo or Bakasi Lomo? How train or taxi fire? How train? Gospel or jazz? Jazz and gospel. Both for you? Both. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us in Doni Lawa Identity. You're truly inspirational. Please keep it up. Thank you so much for having me. Undoni mkunu uzi msele nyanu chinja ilizo kwa ya siya zizange nyene gazi el manga zayo. Si mwenela kuonke okuse njengu kuba ekube keka ukasa amanya amane na gazi wezo so science. Lika isha lekefu, kasi uwe ya sindwendo ila umbi yozo ubutiko. Kwa ya nina kwasa sisika nisetu esboni si api yoku zlolonga. Numbo niso panya panya wakolo obizwa I am not ashamed. Saku nbona nguku. This is my identity. This is my identity. Siya namkela kwa kona, nibukele ima nabaye sishanu ya identity kwenye nam ufiwe kwala kwa napa ku SABC1 mzanti for show. Nkos mkisala nati. It's time now for our regional story which focuses on different faith communities and stories that make up Mzansi's colorful diversity. South Africa is a melting pot of different sounds and rhythms, influenced by our own individuality and culture. Most young people from Pretoria spend their time creating and partaking in different musical activities. 
one of our loyal viewers, Kifile Melo, recently invited us to attend a music art festival in Sunny Park, Pretoria. This is what she had to say. Hi Identity Team, my name is Gifilwe Melo and I'm a member of Bukhabo organization. I'd like to invite you to Pretoria to spend a day with members of Bukhabo as they will be hosting their annual arts and music festival where young people around Pretoria will be showing off their talents from singing, painting and other interesting activities. I'm looking forward to hosting you and I hope you honor us with your presence. Regards, Gifilwe Melo. This is my identity. Hi, identity viewers. My name is Kifila Miller, and I'll be your guest presenter for today. Today, we're in Pretoria Sunnyside Mall to find out more about the Bokabo Public Art Festival. But before we see what's happening, let's find out more about this festival. Joined by the founder, the curator, and the director of the Bokhabo Public Art Festival, Mr. Eric Molatelo Toka. Eric, please tell us more about this festival. Um, the festival was started in 2015. It's a public art festival organized by young people, young people in the arts. We saw a need to take arts outside of uh, exclusive spaces and make it inclusive of everyone. Uh, take it to public spaces, your tax rank, your parks, um, the streets, the public spaces where we can engage um, with, the, with the public and people who normally don't go to theaters and galleries. And how is fine art, poetry and music helping the youth understand who they are and empowering them in becoming better people, socially and spiritually? Uh, poetry, music, fine art, music that we have here, uh, it's performed by young people, people who are painting here, the artists that we involve here, they are young people, some of them are still students, you know, we're providing an opportunity for them to showcase their skills. And through all these arts disciplines, we hope that we will get the message across. So why is it important for young people to know their identity and their history? Um, so and it's a place that is full of young people, you know, young people come here to study and it's very important that through this platform, through this festival, we address issues of uh, identity. And through arts we are trying to, to tell our own stories, stories of Shaka Zulu, stories of Sukukune. Um, you know, we want statues to be, statues of our heroes, you know, our heritage to be in our faces. So every day we can, remind, we can be reminded of who we are, where we come from, so that we can know where we're going. Standing here with me is the founder of Life After Matric, Kifile Bopape. From the performances to the music, what can we expect? Our theme for this festival is unresolved identities. So you're looking to see um, music that really speaks to us as Africans. So we have a band called African Rhythm Production and we also have painters who just use their own ideas, um, linking it with the theme that we have. We have performers who initially start wearing um, outfits that don't represent us as African. And at the end of the performance, they strip it off saying that we want everything that's not us to be ripped off and we want to be left with who we are, with our real identity. Why is it important to host such an event that's affecting young people especially? What we're doing in um, Bokhabo Arts Festival, we want to communicate to the current issues that are going on in South Africa. We're using arts to do that. So we want to be included in the public spaces that we have in Pretoria. So Bokhabo Arts Festival is taking arts out of the galleries and we're going to the streets of PTA. from the director, the curator, and the founders of Bukhang Public Art Festival. Now let's hear from the artists themselves what they have to say about the festival. Arieng. I'm standing here with Batusi Batena. Batusi, what's your take concerning the social issues being addressed using art as a form? I think it's a more interesting way because people can interact with their artwork and people can relate with visual representation of things. So they relate very easily, so it's very much more easy to relate with people using the arts. Okay, and just tell us, what inspires you? I'm inspired by my environment and my challenges as a person. So I try by all means to reflect on my understanding of the world and also to find people facing the same challenges. 
So basically, right now, today, this work is inspired by differences. So we get stirred up because of our dis the differences. about your team what is it that you guys do we are african rhythm uh, 11 piece band uh, what we do we do not only focus on music we do fashion we do music and we also do dance so our music is very different from any other music uh, we play live instruments with african instruments so we focus on uh, jazz on house music and on soul as well so I want you to tell us more about your instruments because I see there's so many instruments. Give us briefly more details about it. We have uh, dondos, uh, congo drums, percussions, uh, marimbas, uh, shakers, we have flutes. So basically we just combine everything together and make it into a sound. What are your hopes for these young artists and the festival? I told them that it's time you take ownership of your art, own it and just be you. So I hope the best for them. We're providing an opportunity for them, you know, to showcase their talent. And we hope that through this we will get support and then, you know, they will grow as well and uh, be amongst some of the best artists in the country. Identity viewers for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed it. And to the Identity team, thank you so much. For now, it's back to the Identity Coffee Shop with VUA. We love sharing such heartwarming stories that helps to positively shape young people in our communities. Thank you to Kifilwe and Eric for inviting us to witness the good work that the Bukhabo organization does by empowering other young people in their community through music and arts. I hope this story inspired you to be a leader in your community too. Ukubani nalo ibali elengolo, elama siku, okanyi elomoye nga tanu kwa bela nati nalo, nga kwenza oko. Nga stumela ingwa te enzulu kutilesi Identity TV Show at gmail.com. Kwa zbani, nani nga lifuma ni tuba loku nikeza ababu kilbetu mzansi for show umfuto kuibali letu. Let's take one more short break. When we come back, we jump straight into our media review segment. Today, we're reviewing a cardio workout app and an inspirational movie called I Am Not Ashamed. We'll be right back. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back to Identity, right here on SAPC One, Zanzi for sure. I'm Viewer Kuala. Um, kambi we black women in science, undoni mkuni, usinga tesi kali inkubo yeti ngenzela inu mfuto. Sali pekisa e Pretoria uki ondendwela ama lunga e Bukhabo organization. Ngoku li kwa shilo kubone zamba pambili, nangu what's happening. A healthy lifestyle is always hard, especially in our current times where you can't find me time. Thankfully, technology and smart gadgets has made it much more easier for us to exercise anywhere and everywhere. Today's app offers you a variety of healthy workout plans to get your whole body toned and feel as fit as a fiddle. It's called 30 Days Cardio Challenge. 30 Days Cardio Challenge app is a workout app created as a tool to help individuals to exercise and work out wherever and whenever. This fitness challenge app will give you step-by-step -step guidance in order to reach your ultimate body weight. The homepage of the app is simple and direct. It offers you different options such as the intro tab, cardio exercises, info tab and more options. To get started, click on the intro tab to get instructions on how your body posture should be positioned. Step 1, you should stand vertically and broaden your shoulders. Step 2 will demonstrate on what your next position should be. The Cardio Exercises tab will provide you with 13 different cardio challenges in which each challenge varies. Each workout contains different difficulty levels one has to complete prior to moving on to the next stage, which begins with Easy, followed by Medium and Advanced. In order for you to easily track your process, you need to start at Level Easy. After you've achieved all the Level Easy challenges, move to the Medium challenges to try different positions. If you always lose track of time, you can simply set a reminder for you to work out by simply clicking the More Options tab and select Notification to set a reminder. The app also gives you an option to share your process on social media such as Facebook, email and Twitter. 
Get your body toned with the 30 Days Cardio Challenge. I am definitely getting this cardio app to get my heart racing. On to our next review, which is an inspiring biographical movie of a teenager, Rachel Roy, who is determined to share a positive message and the love of God. It's called I Am Not Ashamed. Take a look. I've always been drawn to hands. I think it's because it's the way that we touch people. I have this theory that if one person can go out of their way to show compassion, Based on the inspiring, powerful true story and journal entries of high school teenager Rachel Roy Scott, I Am Not Ashamed is a faith-based biography movie that follows the life of this Columbine high school student who grew up knowing the love of God. Just like any other young star, her faith was strong but other times became weak. When she notices that the people around her lack love, she tries to change the status quo by teaching the other young people around her to be more compassionate and caring. I just want to live my life for Jesus and care about people. Hey, can I help you? No. Come on, you must need something. I can take care of myself. The movie provides us with a flashback of Rachel growing up as a child, giving us a glimpse of her childhood and how much love she had for her religion. Rachel is determined to change the lives of those around her through spreading the love of God, but she feels alone and unheard that left Rachel asking herself rhetoric questions about the people around her who lack care and compassion. Rachel finds herself in a dangerous situation where her peers keep questioning her faith and she had to stand up for what she believes in. Just the way the world is. The movie highlights different themes such as love, belief and compassion. If you're looking for something inspiring and heartwarming, make sure you catch this movie starring Macy McLean, Ben Davies, Cameron McKendry, Terry Minton and Victoria Starley. It's called I Am Not Ashamed. But it's a chance. You just might start a chain reaction. Before we wrap up the show, quick reminder that on Friday the 7th of April marks World Health Day. The significance of the day is to create awareness of a specific health theme such as depression, mental illness and diabetes and different activities which extend beyond the day itself. The day also serves as an opportunity to focus worldwide attention on these important aspects of global health. With that, we've come to the end of another episode of Identity. Make sure you catch the repeat on Sunday at 11 a.m. right here on SABC One Mzansi for sure. Stay connected with us via cyberspace. Search for Identity TV Show on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and simply like or follow us. If you're not about the social media life, then don't worry. You can drop us an email on identitytvshow at gmail.com. Today we close the show with a studio performance from the soulful sound of CEO King. From me, Viewer Kuala and the Identity team, see you next week. Goodbye. See you. Please take it away. So this whole world is full of hardship. And this whole world is full of